let's get started. Right, so we are, uh, we are in Naxos, as, uh, as I mentioned earlier. The streets themselves are really beautiful, tiny little streets. We are not going to be able to get lost in the little labyrinth of tiny streets because unfortunately, most of them, I do not have a great signal which is fine. I'm actually almost glad that we don't have a great signal because I was starting to be jealous of Greece in London. I mean, I live in one of the most modern capitals in the world. And, uh, and there's many places where I don't have any internet. And since I'm in Greece, um, with a foreign SIM card, I had amazing internet everywhere. So I was starting to be a bit jealous of the Greek uh, internet. Um, but here in Naxos, I've got amazing signal on the, on the port, but not so much in the little streets. So we're going to go straight down to the port. But before we go, let's take a look at this very religious street art. And also, the, there were some lovely, lovely pieces here. Let me show you before we go. So this is Christian Orthodox, of course. Um, in, uh, I think I've read that 97% uh, of, of Greeks in general are Christian Orthodox. Here in Naxos, you'll see a bit of uh, um, Catholic influences. There's actually a Catholic cathedral that we cannot cover because of the signal. Um, that is because of the Venetians. The Venetians, we, we spoke about them in my last tour in Paros. They basically, um, they came here in, uh, uh, well, here in Naxos, it was in 1207. Um, oh, my little friend, look at you. Hello. Um, so yeah, we had Venetian duke, dukes here for a while. Um, because the Venetians, so from Venice, they were um, slightly apart from the other Italians. And uh, the one that kind of uh, conquered Naxos here is Marco Sanuto. Um, they were basically controlling the trade routes in the Aegean Sea. And um, so that's why in the buildings themselves, you'll see a bit of Catholic influences as well. And we've got those amazing uh, bougainvilliers, uh, the, those pink, um, pink trees. They're quite typical of the, the Cyclades, really. And let's head towards the port. So Naxos, it's the largest of the islands in the, in the Cyclades. It is about, and the, the island uh, in total, it's about 18,000 inhabitants. Uh, we are here in Shara. Um, some people even refer to it as Naxos town. It's the main town in, um, in, uh, in Naxos. I think it's about 7,000 here. Well, when it's uh, the, 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 the high of the season, it's probably many, many more. You need to take your wife here, Adonis. Yeah, well, it's actually, it's beautiful. And I think, um, well, according to what I researched before to come, I think it's probably the best value for, for money out of all the, the, the Cyclades, you know. Um, some of the island, like um, Santorini or Mykonos, can be really expensive. Naxos, um, it's not too bad in terms even the restaurants, the food. Um, to give you an idea, here we have, um, we have a real uh, hotel. Um, Tomorrow we're staying in a dorm, in a, in a hostel in Crete. Um, but here the hotel, decent hotel, a room for ourselves, everything you need, 100 euros for three nights. So it's not bad. How far from Crete? Well, I think it's about four and a half hours on the ferry, Sarah, is that, yeah? So I don't, I'm not sure how many kilometers, but yeah, we're gonna jump on one of those large ferries. Um, no, no, 100 for three nights, Jazz. Um, three nights so about 30 euros a night so basically 15 each so it's not uh, it's not bad and it's a decent hotel usually we stay in the cheapest uh, 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 but so yeah it's the best uh, I think it's the cheapest of all the, uh, the the Cyclades islands well decent hotel I mean we might have some different uh, uh, preferences in terms of uh, we don't spend much time at the hotels anyway, so uh, we usually go cheap. 
So we're here on the port. The port also have an amazing uh, free Wi-Fi, which is quite good when you're on a holiday and, um, and uh, especially since Brexit, because we don't really have free internet in Europe anymore. We've lost all those deals uh, uh, since, uh, since uh, the UK left the European Union. Is it cheap? Oh, yeah, I think it's cheap as well, Natasha, because uh, uh, even looking at tomorrow or the next day in, in, in Crete, it's going to cost us much more. Well, unless we find a youth hostel where we sleep in a dorm again, that's what we did in Paros and that's what we did in, in Athens. Anyway, to tell you a bit more about the island itself, um, it's, uh, it's the largest in the Cycladis, as I mentioned, and it's pretty much always been self-sufficient not really today because today people want their strawberry coconut vegan yogurt and all that but if they wanted to they could um let me show you the map here they could they could feed themselves so we are there in in Shara. uh some of you might have been with me the other day we we went we were in paros then i went to antiparos and uh, then we took a ferry to come here the ferry to come here cost us five pounds uh, so far less than um, when we're going to Crete we paid uh, 80 80 euros to get that each so that's gonna be much more expensive so yeah the the, the island itself um, they have they're, they're very fertile the the grounds here so they have um, uh, they're growing melons peaches olives of course they, 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 they produce a lot of olive oil um, what else? Figs and um, grapes. Of course, grapes. We have uh, a lot of wine from 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 Naxos. Actually, the you know the um, the god that uh, the Greek god, a mythology god that's almost like the saint patron of Naxos. It is Dionysus. Dionysus is the Greek god of wine. Even uh, in the antiquity, um, Naxos was known for his wine. And uh, potatoes as well, they've been growing here since the 1700s. And apparently they're quite known all over Greece. You might uh, go to the supermarket and buy uh, uh, Naxian potatoes. And for many centuries, the main income of the island was not actually tourism, it was emery. Emery is um, uh, a mineral We've got marble as well, but emery is very valuable because Naxos was the main source of emery in Europe. Emery is a mineral that's very abrasive, um, a little bit like sandpaper. So since antiquity, we've used it um, to polish marbles, for example. Um, and actually, it, it was so valuable that through World War I, uh, the French uh, took over the, the, the mines. They wanted to make sure that, you know, the Allies would be um, in control. And um, through World War II, actually, the Italian managed to take over the mine. Uh, so that was a bit of a, a bit of a mess here. So uh, uh, yes, that was. Uh, they, they still have the mines, but I think they're closed now. Uh, but for many centuries, it was the main, uh, the main uh, income of, of the island. And fantastic marbles as well, but we have marble in um, in Paros as well. And they actually have, a, in terms of tree as well, they have a few species that are endemic to uh, to the island. And it is known as Zeus's island. So Zeus, the gods of the gods. Um, let me tell you a bit more about Zeus and how, how he came to this world. So again, it's Greek mythology, so expect cannibalism, bestiality, incest. Uh, we've got a bit of everything. Basically, the mother of all gods was um, uh, Gaia. And Gaia, she, uh, she, she mothered two, two children on her own, no men, a little bit like the Virgin Mary. She had uh, uh, two, so that was Pontus and Uranus. And then with Uranus, so with her own son, she, fa she, she mothered all the Titans. The Titans, they were, um, they were gods uh, and monsters. They were the, cy the cyclones and, and, and all that. And one of the Titans was Cronus. 
Kronus, he basically, um, well, he, he basically betrayed his dad to take over the, the power. Uh, you know, with the, well, we've seen it recently, with the monarchy, usually you, uh, uh, you wait until, until you, you, you murmur dad dies and then you get, you get the throne easy. But with the Greek, Greek gods, they were immortal. So they'll have to kind of betray their parents to, to do a coup and, and, uh, and take over the, the throne. And that's exactly what happened to, with Cronus. He kind of um, betrayed his dad, uh, uh, Uranus, to take over the power. And he was convinced that it would happen to him as well. There was a prophecy that stated uh, that he would, uh, his son would betray him. There's a lovely little church right here on an islet. Let me tell you a little bit more about the islet in a moment. But for now, let's finish about, about Zeus. Zeus, I should say. With some of the Greek gods, I kind of learned about them at school in French. So apologies if my pronunciation is a bit off, because um, some of them have ne literally never pronounced their names in English. So I'm not even sure I pronounce them right. So... Because uh, Cronus was so scared that one of his sons would take over the power from him, he decided to eat all of his children. He literally swallowed them one by one. So that's, for example, Hera, Demeter, um, Astria. Um, so he, he ate five of his children and his wife, Rhea, she... She did not want his last boy, Zeus, to be eaten as well. So she basically hid a few rocks in a bundle of cloth and she gave it to, to Cronus to eat. So Cronus ate a few rocks and he was convinced that he had eaten his son, Zeus. And actually Zeus was sent into a cave here in Naxos. That's where he grew up in a cave here and uh, as he was here apparently he, uh, uh, an eagle arrived on Mount Zeus. Mount Zeus is the tallest point in the, uh, in the island, it's about a, t a thousand meters high. So the eagle came to uh, Mount Zeus to see, uh, to see Zeus and, uh, and he gave him the, um, the thunderbolt. Let me show you a picture of Zeus and his thunderbolt in the chat. It's not actually a picture, it's, um, it's a gif. I wanted to check if that works because we've, I've been told that we can now post a gif in the chat. Uh, I'm not sure that's true. So let's see if you can see the gif. It's a bit useless, but I wanted to find an excuse to see if it works. Oh, that works. Oh, amazing. Good to know. I don't really see the point, but it's good to know. <laughs> Right, so that's how Zeus got the, thunder, the, the thunderbolt. But for now, let me show you um, this little uh, islet with a church in the middle. So this is the church of St. Mary. You literally have to take a boat to go there, so um, uh, I, go, I don't think people go that often. It is, um, the real name is uh, Panagia Mirti Diodisa, and... Uh, Legend has it, let me zoom in a bit, um, legend has it that apparently in the antiquity people came here to worship Poseidon. Poseidon is the god of, um, the, god of the sea. Um, um, I don't think there's any archaeological evidence of that because in antiquity, I bet this islet was not actually an island uh, because we know the Mediterranean raised up quite a lot in the last uh, thousand of years. Talking about Poseidon, you might know his son, Triton. Triton was born as a merman. A merman, it's like a mermaid, but it's a man. And he played in a Disney movie. Let me show you his photo. I'm sure you'll recognize Triton. Huh? So, um, is it Cycladic culture? Yeah, well, it's the Greek mythology. Uh, but yes, it's part of the, the Cycladic uh, culture, exactly, Nina. So, um, so Triton was the son of uh, Poseidon. 
and uh, we can see here where Disney took the inspiration from. I did not know until today. It's just when I was looking at pictures of Poseidon, I was like, this looks like the, the Ariel's uh, daddy. Uh, but yeah, King Triton in, uh, in The Little Mermaid. Right. Yeah, Poseidon. It, I, I think you say Poseidon in English. In French, I would say Poseidon. But yeah. Right. Let's, uh, let's get back to Zeus. After, um, after getting his thunderbolt, uh, Zeus decided to go, um, to go and target his father, the one that, uh, let's cross over actually so we can see a bit of the, uh, of the action there. He, um, he decided to, uh, to, to do a coup against his father. He met his, uh, his girlfriend, Metis, and she told him she could give him a potion that would make his father vomit. So he disguised himself and he applied to be like a servant for, for um, uh, Cronus. Cronus was really happy to be served. And um, as Zeus was bringing wine to Cronus, he put some of the potion inside to make, it vomit, to make him vomit. And Cronus vomited his own children. Well, first he vomited the rocks, and then he vomited um, Hera, he vomited uh, Demeter, um, Hades. So he, vom he vomited his five children. And then, so those guys were the Olympians' god. And they fought, they fought the Titans for, for a while. And, uh, and eventually, they managed to, to take the power. So that's how, that's how Zeus became the, the god of the gods, finally uh, taking, uh, taking over, um, over his dad, really. Right. I'm going to have to move my bum bum because we want to be up there at uh, 25 past because we want to see the sunset from, um, from the, uh, the Portara up there. Are they still working mid meals? Uh, Nina, I'm not sure they're working now. We've seen some, I've seen some actually on Paros, uh, but I've not seen them working. I don't think they are, no. But don't quote me on that. Anyway, we are now heading towards, uh, uh, well, another islet, which is no longer an islet anymore. It's now very much connected um, by a little footpath. And um, there's, uh, there's the, the remains of, um, of uh, uh, well, a door. Portara, porta is, is door. So that's the remain of um, the door of a temple that was never finished up there. And it's one of the, uh, uh, the main attractions, really, in, uh, in, in Naxos. And when you arrive with the ferry, that's, uh, that's what you see first. It's the Portara. And uh, the islet is called the Islet of Palacia. And let me turn around so you can see. So that's the, that's the key where the ferry comes uh, from, from Paros, from Athens, going to uh, anywhere, really, uh, in, the, in the Cyclades. Now, um, let me tell you, uh, well, first, where the name Cyclades come from. Um, some of you, you might have heard that story with me in Paros the other day, but I'll have to uh, tell you a bit more today because it's very much connected to, uh, to Naxos as well. What happened is, in the Greek mythology, the, the king of Athens at the time was, the, um, was his name was... Um, uh, uh, Aegeus, and he had, um, he had a son called, uh, Theseus. And the king of Crete was Minos. And Minos had a wife. Um, this statue, by the way, straight ahead, I'm not sure who she is. There's no information about her whatsoever. Um, she's probably a, a modern representation, but I think she could be Aryan, uh, because, um, this stretch of the water here is sometimes referred to as, um, the bass of Aryan. I'll tell you why in a minute. So basically, um, the king of Crete was Minos and his wife, she, um, she had a little crush on a bull and she had, um, she, by, well, she basically had an affair with a bull. Yeah, I told you bestiality was about to come, and um, she fell pregnant. Her name was Physae. 
She she fell pregnant with an inter interesting baby. Let me show you a photo of the baby in the chat. So the baby was the minotaur. So he was half human, half bull. They kept him in crate in um, in a labyrinth in. Um, in a, a, a building that was a bit of a maze. And every year they had to send um, seven men and seven boys as, um, as a gift uh, to feed the Minotaur. And uh, one year Theseus decided to go. He volunteered to go and be killed by the Minotaur. He believed he could kill him. And he, he agreed with his dad that when, if he was victorious, if he managed to, to come back and, um, and kill the Minotaur, he would, um, oh, my signal is dropping a bit. The other day was fine here. Hopefully it's not too bad. Uh, he agreed with his dad that when he sailed back to, to Athens, he would sail with the white sails if he was victorious. And if he was dead, he would come back with the dark sails as usual, the, the black sails. And, um, when he got to Crete, oh, that's a lovely view here. When he got to Crete, he met um, uh, Ariane, and she was actually the princess. She was the daughter of Minos. So basically, the Minotaur was a half brother, and she fell in love with Theseus, and she decided to help him, to help him, giving him the the string of Ariane. Um, the thread of iron. So basically, when he went into the labyrinth, um, he could uh, leave a, a, a track behind him with the little, like a rope, and then he found his way out. And he went in. He was victorious with the with the minotaur. He managed to kill him, and um, and uh, he he decided to sail back to his dad in Athens. Unfortunately, he forgot to put the white sails on. He sailed back with the black sails. But on his way back, he stopped here in Naxos with, with Arjan. She fell asleep right here on the islet of, uh, of Palazia. She fell asleep here and Dionysos, the god of wine, fell in love with her. He fell in love with a sleeping lady. Uh, there's something quite wrong in there for me, but oh well. So he fell in love with, with Arian and uh, he convinced Theseus to leave her here. So Theseus literally abandoned his, um, his, his lover as she was sleeping. And when she woke up, Dionysos was like, oh, I'll make you my consort. Now you have to be my wife. So she basically... She had to agree anyway, but she never really recovered. She was still in love with, with Theseus. And um, eventually she committed suicide. Well, in some version of the story, she just elevated to, uh, to, to heaven. Um, anyway, let's go all the way up. Uh, so that's exactly here that, uh, that Aryan would have felt asleep. That's why some people call this trench of the water here the... Um, the bass of Aryan. I'm hopping on puffing here, but I want you to have the best view. There we go. Hello, John. Hi, Ginny. Welcome. Welcome to Naxos. There we go. Yeah, perfect timing. So, we are now in the, the Portara. So, the gate itself is meant to uh, to face uh, Delos. Delos is a, a sacred island. Uh, so this dates back to, uh, well, the 5th, the 6th century BC, really. It was the entrance of a palace that most scholars uh, believe it's for the god Apollo. I'll tell you why in a minute. Some actually disagree. Some scholars believe that um, it might have been for the, the god Dionysos, the god of wine. Who knows? Um, we're pretty sure it's, uh, it's for Apollo because the, the Portara itself, it's facing Delos. Delos is a sacred island because, um, well, basically what happened with, with Apollo, it's that, um, let's keep going actually, um, it's that uh, uh, Joss had a girlfriend, Leto, 
and uh, let me squeeze between people. You can see here, it's a very Instagrammable spot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Lito was with Zeus and she fell pregnant. Uh, but Zeus was, already, Zeus was already married to his sister, Hera. Yeah, I know, I promised you incest as well. So Zeus was with Hera. She's the goddess of family and childbirth. Uh, and um, she heard that Lito was pregnant with her husband. So she banned Lito. She told her she was not allowed to give birth any, anywhere on solid ground. So Lito had to go away. She went from places to places with her big tummy, a very big tummy, actually, surprisingly big. And eventually, she ended up on the Isle of Delos. And she thought, OK, I can give birth here because, well, it's not solid ground. So she gave birth to one baby. And to her surprise, there was a second one coming. So she gave birth to the god Apollo and his twin sister Artemis. Apollo was blonde with blue eyes. It was like the sun. Artemis was white with dark hair. She was like the moon. And eventually they were given uh, arches. Uh, and Artemis enjoyed it very much. She became the, the goddess of hunting. And uh, uh, that's an amazing view, isn't it? And, uh, and Apollo, uh, uh, he was obsessed by a, a python, uh, a snake that, that um, Hera had sent to target both of them. And he finally was victorious with the python in the Isle of Delos. So that's how Delos um, ended up being a very, very uh, sacred um, island. Let me give you another view because it's also very nice from here. And uh, so that's why they believe the, the, the Portara herself was for the, uh, so for the god, um, the, the god Apollo. But we don't know that for a fact. What we do know is that it's uh, um, 600 BC and um, uh, it would have been a, a full temple, but it was never finished. And through the Byzantine and through the Venetian period, they took some of the marble uh, to, to, to basically upcycle it. So that's the only part uh, that survived. So it's like two monolites and, uh, and one at the top. It's, it's funny because the, uh, the, the proportions are very similar to the, you know, the National Geographic um, uh, logo. Oh, the sun is right going. People are clapping the sun. I've never seen people clapping the sun before. <laughs> That's interesting. When you come here at, um, at, uh, at sunset, you realize that everyone is on selfie mode. The other day we were here on, was it Friday? We were trying to count people with a selfie stick or people taking photos of, of themselves uh, instead of just you know, enjoying the moment. It's like Instagram comes first. Um, there was actually, it's not too bad today, but the other day there was a queue to take the, to take the photo with the, the Portara. All right, here we go. The sun has officially gone. Now all those people are going to rush into the port to go and have a, to go and have a drink, drink um, in, the, in the bars. Oh, Adonis, I love your photo. It's um, uh, the little Paddington and the, the Queen. Yes, today people are obsessed with, uh, with selfies. Let me give you another view of the, um, of the door. So on the left inside there, that's Grotta. Grotta, well, Grotta means cave in, in French. And that's um, probably named after Zeus's uh, uh, caves. Uh, Mont Zeus, let me see, can we see Mont Zeus? I think straight in the middle of the screen there that, um, that, uh, uh, put your finger away, sister. <laughs> uh, that should be Mont Zeus. It's 1,004 meters high. Um, so that's uh, where legend has it. Um, Zeus uh, would have uh, spent his uh, childhood. You can actually climb Mount Zeus. We didn't because, um, uh, well, we wanted to enjoy the, the beaches. The beaches here are absolutely, absolutely lovely. Um, probably nicer than Paros, really, because the, the water was so clear in some of them. 
although the roads, uh, by the way, straight ahead, that's Paros there. That's where we were a few days ago. The roads are not amazing, though. Um, we've rented some scooters. Um, we probably would have been a little bit safer with uh, a quad, you know, um, a, an ATV, as you might call it, because uh, basically there's no road. Well, that's why I kind of crashed a bit, because uh, 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 it's basically sand everywhere. So that can be quite, uh, quite dangerous. Even with a car, it's probably not that comfortable. If you want to explore off the beaten path, uh, you probably want to rent a quad or um, uh, an AVT. That's probably, probably safer. Anyway, let's have a last view of the, the light going away. By the way, the island itself, we know it as Naxos today. We believe that back in the days, it could have been, um, it could have been called Dia, which kind of means God, um, or even Dionysus, and eventually it was renamed after a leader that was called Naxos. Are they expensive to rent? Adonis is asking. The quads, I have been told about 40 euros a day. When you run them here on the spot, you could probably negotiate a bit more. I don't think you want to run them on the internet before to come, though you, you want to come and negotiate. The scooters, um, well, most of them were quite new, and they said they were saying 25 a day. We were like, no, 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 we want some rubbish, crappy ones. And eventually we found some. We paid 40 euro for three days, each uh, scooters. Luckily, we took the crappy one because I broke the brick, um, but I glued it. No, but no one would notice, hopefully. Um, uh, we'll see. I'll let you know tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, the, um, the, 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 the scooters, you can, uh, you can negotiate, but yeah, you're probably better off with, uh, with a quad. It's much safer on the sandy road and the mountain roads and, uh, and all that. Anyway, that's going to be the end of the tour. I'll, um, I'll 